right, we got that part going. <laughs> All right, so basically the reason I wanted to do this was just so I could let people know that I've come to the point in my life where I realized there's really six steps in this process that I could narrow it down because I think what happens is people get so overwhelmed and like, I wanna be healthy, but I don't know where to start. And I was the same way. I was in the same boat about six years ago. <laughs> so, you know, I just wanted to kind of narrow it down so that way people can understand, like, it's not really as hard as it seems like. It's just, you have to have some kind of guidance or know the knowledge to get there, so. And I am Jody Watkins, by the way. <laughs> and I did put on here, it starts with the mind. That's one thing that most people also don't understand that we have to get up here before we can even conquer anything. And I've had to go through the same thing over the last few months, actually. So, since you showed up, you get an irresistible offer at the end. And I'm doing a live on here, so um, I'll be making sure I see who's on here. You can get that offer, too. All right. <laughs> All right, so. It does take work, but it's well worth it, all right? And I can definitely attest to that. Like everything that I've done, it has completely shaped the outcome. I mean, I just turned 41 and I feel completely better than I did at 31. <laughs> so it's definitely shaped a lot for me. But um, yeah, I just wanted to, to kind of give people the tools that, that I used to get here. And again, just make sure people understand that it's not as hard as you know, it seems like because there's so much information out there and we never know exactly where to get it from, you know. So that's where I was too. So I'm going to share a little bit of my journey with you, um, a little bit of my story. You're going to see some some pictures of when I was kind of in a toxy turkey, even after I learned everything. The journey is continuous. It never stops. So, and it's always going to go like this. Everybody thinks that the journey is just like, you're going to lose weight all the time. Hmm. No. <laughs> all right. But once you get to the point where you feel good, all that other stuff is going to come into play. And that's something I had to learn to do. All right. So what you're about to discover is my six-step process to total health and wellness. All right. And my promise to you <laughs> is that I'm gonna be 100% genuine and authentic. I don't know how to be anybody else but me. <laughs> and that's something I had to kind of come to terms with on my way up here. Um, I was kind of running behind and I was like, oh, I should wear something different. Maybe put some jeans on and look nicer. And I was like, this is me. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, and, and I'm actually more comfortable when I'm allowed to just be me. So I'm not gonna try to impress anybody. I'm just here to share information and you know, just make sure that I can give you everything I got. I'll always be genuine. I will always be 100%. I'll always be upfront with you. <laughs> I'm always going to tell you how it is. <laughs> but I'm also very compassionate and I'm real. Uh, I'm always going to go through that with you. All right, so there is a vicious cycle that's holding most people back, all right? And it's usually here. <laughs> it's, it's the belief that either um, maybe we grew up a certain way and we're not deserving of something. Um, or just, you know, we get to a certain point and then something, life happens, and, you know, we're kind of right back where we started. So we're like, oh, well, we're back here. I'm just going to keep going in the same direction. And that's that cycle. And we see it all the time. I see it every day, <laughs> you know, people walking around. And it's just this vicious cycle that we're in if, we're don't, if we don't make it a point to get out of it. All right. So what do you guys think the main problem is? when it comes to health and wellness. I'll let you go first. You get to be on here too. <laughs> the main problem? Yeah, like when it comes to just getting, getting healthier, yeah, getting started. Um, I guess just being negative, just used to being negative and not feeling like you could be any change, yeah. I guess, or result is not worth it. Yeah, what about you? Um, I would say time. People often say they just don't have the time. Oh, yeah. So that's the second step, too. <laughs> Those are really good. And that's, I hear that all the time. So that's why I made sure I, I put that in the system. Like, okay, let's conquer time management because everybody's like, I don't have time. I don't have time. All right. Well, the time, <laughs> speaking of time, 
the time is right now, all right? So, you know, everybody just wants to wait until the perfect time, but the problem is we're not promised tomorrow. We have no idea what's gonna happen when we walk out this door, right? So, like with me, I had to get my, my stuff together too because it was just like, you know, if I don't do this now and I don't let people know what, what my mission is and what I'm passionate about, I might not be able to do that. I might not ever be able to do that. So that's why I made it a point to put this workshop together and I'm gonna keep doing them until I can, you know? All right, so why listen to me? <laughs> I was supposed to put like a, a one shot up there, but I didn't. Um, I put like a compilation. So this kind of just shows the little journey, all right? So there's a lot that happened behind the scenes back, way back but I had to conquer my own stuff to get where I am today. So um, that's the number one reason why I hope people listen to me is because I've been there. I don't tell anybody anything that I haven't experienced or that I'm not going through now. I'm, I can relate to just about everything. So um, I was in the Air Force for 15 years and then I had some doors shut in my face and then I just had to press forward, <laughs> you know? And that was another thing, just getting over those obstacles when you can't control everything. Um, I became a certified group instructor uh, in 2012 and then a personal trainer and also got into nutrition specialization, which is what helped me out <laughs> and it helps me help other people. And then I decided, you know what, there's more to it than just fitness and nutrition. So I got into health coaching and actually trying to get to the bottom of everything. Um, I did accomplish my MBA as a working mom in 2017, so that was a kind of a pat on the back, <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> um, and the system worked for me and many others. I don't use fad diets. I don't give magic pills. I don't say you're gonna lose 10 pounds tomorrow. Like that's just not real, all right? I use everything, it has case studies to back it up. It's all science-based and I don't make anything up, all right? Um, and I truly care about you. <laughs> I care about everybody. All right, so. My turning point, can you see that right? That was, so that's my little girl, when she was my little girl. And this is when I kind of first started getting into group training. Like I was, I, I was actually in a really bad spot in my life at that point. Um, I was actually really depressed. <laughs> and one of my friends took me to a Zumba class. <laughs> and I was like, everybody in here is happy. <laughs> I need to be around these people more. So, um, but yeah, so this is actually, my daughter was, that was in May, so she was about five months old. Um, and during, while I was pregnant, my mom passed away. So I was seven months pregnant and my mom passed away. Now, um, a little bit about that, we didn't have the closest relationship when I was growing up, but we did get closer when she got sick and stuff like that. So um, she was very excited because that was gonna be her first grandchild, my only child. So she was excited that was gonna be her first grandchild. Um, but then something happened and she ended up not making it. So when people say, why are you so passionate? What is your why? That's my why. That was a big turning point for me. It was kind of like, okay, I'm headed down. I'm not headed down a good path. You know, like my mom was not healthy. She didn't take care of herself and then look what happened. So I wanted to make sure that I did things differently. So that's kind of where I started. But then a couple years later, like I said, um, something happened, a door shut in my face that I worked really hard for, and then I kind of got back into this rut. Um, so then I was able to meet some positive people. And that was actually, we went to um, a San Antonio Stars game. I was in San Antonio at that time. And I was actually able to be like the half court show <laughs> with everybody else. So that was a really good feeling. And I just, I started noticing that, you know, when you're around more positive people, and a community of people on the same in the same goal and in the same direction that want you to succeed, <laughs> then that's a really good feeling. So, so fast forward, <laughs> and this was my 41st birthday. So, this that was what last week, last Monday? I don't even remember. <laughs> Two weeks ago. So, <laughs> so I just turned 41. But and this was back in 2016. Um, I think 2000. 17-ish, but, and then my husband took those pictures. But um, it's just, I was happier. But I still didn't have it all. I still didn't have up here. 
until now. And so that's why this picture is probably the happiest, most free picture I've taken, even though it was in my little apartment. But it was just me feeling like I have conquered <laughs> in my 40s. Like, I feel good. I finally feel like I'm living life. So that's a little bit about me living the total health life. Like I said, it never stops. All right, so what are some of the challenges that people face normally when it comes to, I mean, we've already kind of conquered the time management thing, but what about like mentally? Have you ever just been like, you know what, I'd rather just sit on the couch and watch TV? Yeah, we've all been there, right? <laughs> yeah. So, but how is that getting you towards your goals? I know like Kelly over here, she doesn't have a choice. She's got to get active. She's got two kids, right? So, you know, when people have kids and they're just sitting around, Ellen, do you have any kids? No. No? Okay. But we see it, right? We see people that they have kids and they're just sitting around. They're on the couch to watch TV. I've been there. You know, like a long day of work. I just want to sit down and watch TV, right? But how is that accomplishing your goals? Are you really making the most use of your time? So when people say, I don't have time, I kind of look at them. And, I, you know, if it, if it comes down to it, I wish they would just write down what they did in the day. And I could probably easily point out, like, there you got 30 minutes. There you got 30 minutes right there. That's all you need. 30 minutes. 20 or 30 minutes. <laughs> so, and the thing that I've noticed, too, is involving my child, um, she's, everything's normal to her. She's way more active than probably a lot of the kids, you know, and that's just normal. So, she's going to get that, too. <laughs> all right, so, as we know, a positive mindset and then adding in good habits. That's the big one. <laughs> we gotta add in good habits. If we do that, then that's gonna equal the total health, all right? Now, most of us, I, I listen to YouTube videos pretty much every day, actually every day. I've actually been listening to more and more <laughs> motivational videos and, and I, I hear a lot more science involved and in, you know, what they say is, your subconscious mind is formed around or by the age of seven. So then after age seven, whatever the world tells you is what goes into your mind and it becomes a habit. So whatever you, you do on a daily basis, that's what you're comfortable with and it's really hard to step out of that comfort zone, right? Yeah. So, and I've, I'm telling you, I've been there. <laughs> like, this is new to me, right? So, but you gotta, sometimes you just gotta take that first step and once you take that first step, everything else is gonna come into play. All right, so the bigger reason, why am I really doing this? Well, every time I walk around, I get really sad. Like I said, I think back to like when my mom passed away and how that made me feel. And I see these kids and they're walking around and their parents are unhealthy and, and I just get sad for them. I really do because I know how that feels when your parent is not around anymore. And that's hard. And some of those parents aren't seeing it from their kid's point of view, and their kid isn't even noticing because that's what they grow up with, right? So they don't even know that that's not right, that that's not how it should be. So that's my mission. My mission is to really, like, I specialize in women's fitness, but just to get um, moms especially to realize, like, you know, your kid is watching everything that you do. And I know that from my kid is, she tells me things and I'm like, oh, you were paying attention. <laughs> like, they're watching everything that you do, so they're gonna mimic what you do and what you say and how you act. And if you're acting in, in a world of fear and you're you know, always afraid to step out and have faith and just believe in something bigger than yourself, your kid's gonna get that. And that's, that's rough when you think about it like that. So that's why I'm doing this, that's why I'm here. Kind of help people understand that there's more to it. <laughs> All right, so what's different about me? Every time I go to a networking event or especially like a marketing class um, and they say, well, why would people want to work with you? And I'm like, oh, I'm just me. Like, that's all I know. Like, I don't, I've never really had to explain that. So I guess the only way I can really answer that is, I mean, I've already kind of told you a little bit, but I'm passionate about this. If I didn't have bills to pay, I would do this for free. I really would, because that's how much I want to. I want to help other people change what they're doing already, you know. And so that's, I believe deep down, that's the difference between me and some of the other people. Because I've seen other, co I've had a coach in the past that you know just treated me like a number, and I know how that feels. And 
So now I just want to make sure that I never do that with anybody else. Everybody I work with, we become really good friends. I probably know them better than their spouses. Sometimes, you know, like we have that communication, we have that that bond. So even when you know their program ends, we still stay in communication. I still check up on them, and they still talk to me. So I think that's truly the difference. I'm just me. <laughs> All right. So what are some of the myths that you think about when it comes to health and wellness? Let's go first. Chewing. You're oh, chewing. Okay, All right. Sorry. Yeah, she's eating. So I did not plan. I brought. See, I brought them apples and protein bars, but y'all aren't here, so you don't get that. Sorry. <laughs> um, myths when it comes to health. Yeah, just health and wellness. Um, what are some of the myths? Let's see if anybody's on here. Got a couple people watching. Nobody's saying anything. What are some of the myths, you guys? Um, well, it's not really a myth, but genetics. I guess sometimes people rely on that. And it may not necessarily be your story. Yeah. It's like, oh, my dad was diabetic. Mm -hmm. My mom has this. I'm going to have it too. Yeah. Type of thing. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very. That was exactly the answer I was looking for. Or like when I was growing up, I knew people that were like, well, I'm just big bones. Yep. All right. That's a big one. <laughs> we all got the same bones. <laughs> Even if yours is a little bit bigger, that doesn't mean that you should be 300 pounds overweight. Right. You know, like that's, but I think we just, we tell ourselves something and then we just believe it because we tell ourselves, whatever we tell ourselves is what we're going to believe. Right. So, I mean, even just with me um, coming into my own, it's like I had to start telling myself different things. Like, like I do deserve to be around positive people. I do deserve to be around, you know, just uplifting people. And, and be able to help people that, that want me to help them. I deserve that. Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I started telling myself that that I actually started believing it, right? So when we do that, we actually, we create a new story for ourselves. And that's where those new habits come into play too. All right, so like I said, I have a six step process to total health. The first one, you gotta change your mindset. How easy is that the older you get? How old are you? I know, I keep asking you stuff when you're chewing. <laughs> I'm 47. Are you? I am. What? I get All right, you guys, I'm sorry, but I'm going to turn this around because I don't know. <laughs> no one ever believes She is not 47, you guys. She says she's 47. <laughs> All right, and then we got Kelly over here with her two kids. <laughs> Kelly's about to have a birthday. Me too. Oh, yeah. forgot. You forgot? <laughs> yeah, I went to her birthday. July 1st. Okay. July 19th. Oh, really? It's nice. Nice. He's awesome. What? Happy oh, birthday. So well, we need to just have like a birthday get together for everybody. I didn't have one for mine, so it can be a late one for me too. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So, you know, when you get older, and even with me, like like I said, this really didn't click with me until probably around 39 is <laughs> when it really just kind of clicked. <laughs> like I was doing everything beforehand. But when I actually got my mind right, was probably around the age of 39, and then it's just been kind of constant. And then, you know, when something, like I moved here, and I had to redo that portion of it, because now I'm in a place where nobody knows me, all right? So it's kind of like this thing, this constant thing that you have to do, and how easy is that the older you get? Not so much. Not so much, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I started noticing that with me. So now I've decided, I'm like, you know what? Let's focus on that first. <laughs> so I put that as the first step in the program because if you don't have your mind right, you're not gonna accomplish anything. You're gonna quit and you're just not gonna feel like doing anything. And so that's the first step of the whole process. Number two, time management. <laughs> and I'll go more into this later. The third one and a big one with women, self-care. Knowing that it's okay to take care of yourself. How often do we try to take care of everyone else and forget about us? Been there. <laughs> then we go into kind of like basic nutrition, how I can help you, um, the tools that I can give you to, to learn to where you can pretty much kind of change your lifestyle. And it, sometimes it's just a couple of things that people need to do. It's not huge. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. It really just depends. But I try to I educate everybody on 
what's going into their bodies and that way they kind of notice things a little bit more or when they go to eat a certain thing they're like wait <laughs> you know and they have that that kind of minute where they just make the decision first instead of just going into it like everybody else does then we go into exercise so i put exercise as the fifth step because that's the one everybody likes to do <laughs> but I, I need people to understand that you know it's you got to get everything else right first. If you don't have the time management, you're not going to go work out. And oh, by the way, you don't need a gym. Do it at the house. You know, <laughs> like, and and so that's another thing that I have to get people to understand. The last one, <laughs> before I give everybody their certificate of graduation and say, all right, let's keep going after this. I'm gonna check in with you from time to time. Is consistency. By the time they finish everything else they should be to the point where they feel like they can be consistent. And that's the ultimate goal for me to have for with them. I don't care how much weight they lose. I don't care um, you know, what they look like at the end. It's just if they've incorporated the things that, that I needed them to and they put forth the effort and they have that epiphany where it's like, I get it now. I know where I was messing up before. Now I know where I can continue to be better. That's the ultimate goal for me. And once they get their mind right and they figure out the time management, usually everything else comes into play. The weight goes, the everything. <laughs> All right, so mindset shift. And I'm actually writing a book too, so uh, this will be all in there too. But um, the first one is stop blaming others. <laughs> How many times have we, I won't say we, because I know I did it. I don't maybe you guys didn't. <laughs> But I know I did it where it was like, you know, if only that person hadn't done this or if only they had let me do this or, you know, and we don't look at ourselves. We never turn that mirror around on ourselves and say, you know, well, what, what could I have done better? You know, so until we do that, then we're not going to have that shift. We have to take ownership. We definitely have to take ownership. If there's anything that we didn't get in life, it's because usually something that maybe we didn't work hard enough. And so we have to take ownership of that. We have to believe in ourselves. That's a huge. I'm gonna turn this back this way. One day I'm gonna have somebody videograph everything. We'll have like a videographer. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta have that vision, right? That bigger vision. <laughs> but yeah, you definitely gotta believe in yourself. If you don't believe in yourself, you might do well for the first week or two but then you're just gonna go back into those habits that you had before. You're not gonna be able to obtain total health. All right, so this is Elsie, and I actually, she's doing her first bodybuilding competition this weekend. So I am super proud of her. We actually started working together about a little over two years ago. Um, she was very anorexic at one time, and so she had kind of overcome that in, in her life. And, but then she was to the point where she didn't really know how to keep going. So um, Elsie wrote this. She said, I remember when I walked into the gym for the first time, I had absolutely no sense of direction what to do. Um, many times I just wanted to give up. I walked out of the gym on multiple occasions, then I stopped believing in the excuses. And then she says, the best decision I ever made for my health was hiring Jody. Which made me so big. <laughs> <laughs> believing in the discipline, the routine she had for me, and believing in myself. She had to believe in herself. So what Elsie decided, she, um, we were actually getting her ready for her first competition last year. And about four months out, she realized she was pregnant. She found out she was pregnant. <laughs> so all this stuff that we had been doing, you know, she found out she was pregnant, which was good because that meant that we got her healthier. Mm -hmm. She actually had had, and she said it was okay that I shared this, but she actually had had some miscarriages in the past. And she did a video testimony on this too. Um, and so once her body got healthier all around, she was able to conceive and she has a beautiful, healthy baby girl right now. So she, she had her baby at the end of December. Um, and then she said, you know what, Jody, I think I wanna get on stage again. I wanna try this again. So she's used everything that we've learned to prepare herself and she's doing amazing. So she's actually getting on stage and we're gonna do like a podcast and a YouTube video and all that. I told her, I'm gonna wait until afterwards so she can kind of decompress a little bit because <laughs> those last few days are kind of stressful. But yeah, so this is Elsie and she's an amazing individual. She um, 
she was working with animals also and she just decided that she wants to help me and help other people so we're gonna be working together pretty soon so i'm happy about that all right so here's elsie's testimony you hear something like that so yeah thank you Elsie <laughs> we still talk pretty much every day <laughs> um but yeah so and that, I think that was another big thing with me is when I started hearing people tell me what I was doing with their lives and I was like you know what I can believe in myself <laughs> because I'm doing it I'm doing what I need to be doing so what do you guys think I know that when I watched that video, I was like, Whew. and it was only supposed to be like a minute, <laughs> like a minute and a half. And she was like, I, I couldn't do it that short. <laughs> but what did you think of that? Good? She was honest. Yeah, she was. It seemed really genuine, right? Because mm -hmm. it was. <laughs> and that's why I like her. And that's why I said I want you to join me because I know that together we can really do a lot. So, All right. So let's get into time management back on the... On the happier side of things, right? <laughs> All right, so everybody, every time I talk to somebody, especially busy moms, I'm gonna keep throwing moms in the equation, but even just people in general. So when I have somebody that, that's not a mom, but they might be working and they tell me they don't have time, I'm like, <laughs> hold up now. <laughs> what are you doing with your day? <laughs> let's, let's work on this. <laughs> so I've actually implemented, um, I actually have notebooks. So, I, I keep a notebook for myself 
and I actually write down my schedule every day. So most people will freak out when they find out what time on the day that I wake up. <laughs> it's usually pretty early, around three-ish. Um, but that only that works for me. And I, I mean, I, I was not there. I was not there many, many years ago, right? Like I used to be the one that would turn off the alarm clock 50 million times and then be like, crap, I gotta get to work. You know, that used to be me. It was exactly what I did. Um, then I ended up in a situation where my husband was deployed, but I was taking three classes and I was working 15, 16 hours a day. I had to get up in the middle of the night in order to get my schoolwork done. It was either that or I was gonna be paying back a lot of money. <laughs> and I didn't wanna to have to pay that money back. <laughs> so that was my driving force. So I ended up on day shift, um, cause my job back then, I could go on any shift. It was 24 seven operation. So we had three shifts. Um, I ended up on day shift as a supervisor and I was still having to wake up. I got up at like 2.30 in the morning because I had three classes and then I had a baby. She was like a year and a half. Um, and that was the only way I could make it work. I had to be at work by a certain time, I had to drop her off first. That was the only way I could do it. So that kind of started <laughs> that for me. And back then I was only getting about four hours of sleep. Now I'm getting six to seven because I go to bed earlier. That works for me. Not everybody does that. Some people like to work out after work. I prefer to work out first thing in the morning <laughs> because then I don't know what's gonna happen the rest of the day. So I know I already got it done. So I prefer to do things in the morning. Um, also, it's just my daughter and I here, so I wake up super early because I need my me time. <laughs> I need my me time. <laughs> but for time management, I tell people, keep a schedule. Log what you do. Log what time you're gonna wake up. Wake up a little bit early, not much, maybe 15, 20 minutes. Be grateful for what you have. Think positive things in your life and see how much that might impact. Establish a good routine. If your routine is not working for you now, who's in charge of changing that? You. Me. Thanks. <laughs> I was laying y'all right. Sorry. I was laying y'all right. I was like, maybe somebody heard me. <laughs> Go over here. So y'all hear me? Who's in charge of changing that? <laughs> oh, there's a bunch of people on here. Hey, y'all. Okay. <laughs> So if your routine, if your current routine is not working for you, who is the only person who can change that for you? Yourself. Right? If, if, it does, if, it, if I can't get everything done in the course of the day by waking up later in the day, <clears throat> I gotta wake up earlier. That's it. That's the only way I can change. We all got 24 hours. So if I can cut you know, maybe my sleep a little bit short, I know doctors say you gotta get eight hours of sleep. I went through PA school a little bit and that was one of the things they said for us and we went through all that science and stuff like that. I don't know, I work just fine with six to seven hours, I'm good. So, you know, I just, that works for me and it gives me a couple extra hours in the day. So I'm able to be a lot more productive. Wake up earlier. That's usually the key to it, you know, people just hit that snooze button. And then what happens, they wake up and I used to be in the same boat where I wake up reactive. Right, because now I'm like, oh crap, I gotta get ready for work. And I'm, I'm already stressed before I even start my day. And how good is that for you? Then you're just gonna be in a bad mood all day. Nobody wants to be around you. <laughs> all right, so here's my client, Jenny. All right, so Jenny did not like to wake up. <laughs> she didn't like waking up. But it's funny because later on, we, you know, as we started working together and stuff like that, she started seeing me leaving the gym when she was coming in <laughs> and she wanted to get in there a little bit earlier. So she did, she started waking up just a little bit earlier. And I always tell people, you don't have to wake up like an hour or two earlier. Start with 15, 20 minutes. After about a week, 25 minutes, you know, and just kind of bump it in increments until you're able to do what you need to do during the day. All right. She says, before I started with Jody, I had no idea how to provide the right nutrients for my body or how to build and keep muscles. She's competing, actually, this was a little bit older. She's actually competing the end of July. So, and I'm not a bodybuilding coach, y'all. I'm just here to help people get healthy. I just know how to get them there if they need to, because I did, I did it myself, so. Um, but she's doing her first bodybuilding show. She says she can't believe she's actually doing it. She says this all the time. 
She's like, I would not be doing this if it weren't for how confident I feel in my body right now. I'm so grateful that I started working with Jody and she gave me this confidence. So, but yeah, that was her. I'll never be able to wake up that early. She used to tell me that all the time. I can never wake up as early as you do. Not to do it. Self-care. This is important. You gotta take time for you. You have to. I had to learn that too. We want to just help everybody, especially women. Women. We want to help everybody. We just want to, I don't know, we're, we're supposed to be nurturers, right? So we just try to nurture everybody else and then guess who we forget about? We put ourselves on the back burner and then we end up miserable because we're not taking care of ourselves. You gotta take time for you. You want to incorporate more positivity in your day. If you're around negative people all the day, how do you think you're gonna end up feeling? Negative, right? Now, if you're in a work situation like I used to be where you can't always help that, if you can take a break and get away from those people or go watch a motivational YouTube video like I do a lot, that's how I get my positive in, you know? And then eventually I can just say my own positive things and, and that's how I incorporate that in my day. You can't control those people. I don't even try to. I'm sorry you had a bad day and I say that sometimes. I'm really sorry you've had a bad day. I hope you have a better day. And that's what I say and maybe it impacts them, maybe it doesn't. Maybe they'll still go around being negative all the time, but who knows? You gotta be able to give yourself the okay to focus a little bit on yourself. It's okay. <laughs> if I was in Kelly's situation, I think I'd be waking up at two o'clock in the morning. No, <laughs> all right, so I put this picture on here on purpose. This is me. This is me. So. This was later on. Um, I actually blew out my knee. So this was the beginning of 2008. Yeah, this was pretty recent, <laughs> 2018. So, and after this, I had already done like three bodybuilding competitions and stuff like that. But I blew out my knee. I wasn't able to work out like I was. Remember we talked about that. Um, and then what happens? You're, you're sitting around and then what do you do? You start eating. Right, because we just go back to our comfort zone, right? We just go back. So I really just had to get myself together. But like I said, this is another thing is I was also doing personal training. I was always in the gym, but I was helping everybody else. I wasn't working on me, right? So I was doing that. This is what happens when you try to take care of everybody else and you're not taking care of yourself. Before you know it, you gain that weight right back, all right? So one thing I had to learn is that it was okay for me to take care of me. Um, I did get myself back on track. And even with the blown out knee and not being able to do a whole lot with my legs, I got myself on stage because I wanted to do that. So I ended up, especially when Elsie got pregnant, I said, somebody's out to represent us. <laughs> so I just, but I had to mentally get there. I focused solely on nutrition. I tracked my foods and I was able to, to reach the goal. Gotta look out for number one. All right, nutrition. It's not rocket science. You make smarter choices. All right, once you learn how to incorporate healthier foods into your life and you allow that to be okay, you'll start noticing that when you go out to eat, you're not craving the stuff that you might have craved before. You're not craving the fast food. Um, I also tell people never leave the house without food. Bring something with you. <laughs> it saves time and it saves money because you already bought it at the grocery store. <laughs> and now you don't have to spend, waste time going through a fast food restaurant or whatever. I do tell people it's a good idea to write it down. Um, I use my fitness pal, most of my clients use my fitness pal. Um, and I always, and that's why we cover time management first because then I'll get that. I don't have time to track my foods. I'm like, just track them for one day. One day, start with that. One day a week, just track your food. Don't try to be ultra healthy that day because <laughs> you're tracking them that day. But what'll happen is you'll start noticing where you might fall into these old habits and what you might be eating that you could probably change a little bit. And you just, sometimes that's all you need is just to see it. Use science, not fads. There's so many diets out there. And every time somebody says, I tried so-and-so diet, and I'm like, really, how's that going for you? Well, I lost this amount of weight. Okay, are you gonna do that for the rest of your life? And that's the question that usually I get the deer in the headlights. Huh? 
Are you going to do that for the rest of your life? Are you going to drink those shakes for the rest of your life? Are you going to, I don't know, what else? Oh, the keto. Like, I don't knock any of that, but are you going to do that for the rest of your life? I like carbs. I'll make them work for me. <laughs> now, it's all moderation. You got to be careful. <laughs> but, you know, I don't, I don't believe in restricting yourself. I think that you have to learn. Now, if there's some foods that you know that you'll go overboard if you have them in your house, get rid of them. Right? Until you can get to that, to where you can eat a little bit at a time. All right, so science says habit formation based on daily repetition takes around 10 weeks. 10 weeks. Okay. Um, you'll see it. <laughs> she said, I had to use the bathroom. But um, so there used to be a thing that said 21 days. So I'd be like, 21 days, you just gotta do it for 21 days. But then they came out and really what that was more about was when people would get like plastic surgery, it took them 21 days to get used to that new body. It takes 10 weeks to develop new habits. So when people do something for a month and then they fall off, it's because they haven't given themselves enough time to develop those new habits. So you got to give it time. It's not an overnight success. That comes from the British Journal of General Practice. All right, next one. Evidence suggests that cardiovascular disease is driven in large part by lifestyle factors such as low vegetable and fruit consumption, high glycemic, low diet, obesity, and a sedentary lifestyle. Usually they all go together. The people who are sedentary usually aren't eating what they need to be eating. The people who are more active, they usually are because they're more energetic. Um, so it really just kind of goes hand in hand. A lot of the people I've worked with, they just need to incorporate more vegetables into their diet. That's really it. Um, like you said, you, you eat a lot of fruit, right? Not anymore. Well, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. but you did. Yeah. So how did you change that? Um, just kind of. Like instead of eating maybe like three bowls a day, I went to two, to yeah. one, to half a cup. Yeah. So. Did you incorporate maybe some vegetables on top of that to help you um, curb it? I was fine with eating vegetables. It was just okay. in my mind, fruit, it's natural sugar. Yeah. So I was like, oh, yeah. watermelon, mango, kiwi, bring it all here. Yeah. yeah. So when I do eat fruit now, it tends to be an apple, um, berries, like yeah. blackberries or blueberries that have less sugar. Okay. Yeah. All right, the last one and the one that I like to go by. <laughs> Sustainable diets are those diets with low environmental impacts that contribute to food and nutrition security and to healthy life for present and future generations. So that's why I was saying like this is especially with like moms or you know if you want to be a mom or if just anybody really like when I when people start getting healthier like you said people notice that you look better you know stuff like that you're gonna end up impacting. Eventually, somebody's gonna start asking you questions, right. right? And you're gonna impact how they end up doing things. And that, I think, is really amazing when you can you know, just be what you are and do what you're doing to help yourself get healthier. And then you got other people like, wait, what are you doing? Right. What's going on? Come here. Because <laughs> those, sometimes those are the people who are trying to pull you back, though. So you have to be careful. Sometimes those are people that, you know, I don't know, I've worked in a medical field before and they would bring like donuts and pastries and all this. Why aren't you eating all this? Well, because I'm not there right now. Or even That's family. Like I have, I have family in Orlando. So when yeah. I go visit, it's always like, well, we don't see you all the time. So, yeah. You know, and then you're like, I don't eat like that anymore. And you're the oddball. Right? Yeah. Exactly. So a lot of times what happens with people is when they have that pressure from their family or friends, they just go. They just eat it. They just eat it. Yeah. Because they want to please them. So instead of pleasing them, you know, sometimes you just got to be the oddball. You got to be the odd person out sometimes. And that's okay. You have to be okay with that. But of course, you got to have the right mindset to be okay. All right. So this was Natalie. Um, and I put that thing on there. Have you ever heard that abs are made in the kitchen? Mm -hmm. It is pretty much true. <laughs> you know, I, people are like, man, I want to get that six pack. I'm like, well, everybody's got a six pack. You just got to get it there. But you know, you're not going to be able to see it until you're eating what your body needs. And it's not just protein, carbs, and fats. It's what kind of vitamins are you taking in? What are you putting into your body that is going to give you the best results? All she did was start tracking her food. Wow. 
Exercise. I see this all the time, especially I'm going to keep picking on women because I notice women a lot more just because I am one. <laughs> Especially women, I know I used to see it where they walk in the gym and they look around and then they go straight to the cardio room. <laughs> and I would just be like, come back, come back. And you know, it's just, they get intimidated. You know, there's people in there, um, I don't know, some of the gyms, they have like these muscle heads, you know, and who wants things. to work out around them. <laughs> <laughs> the funny part is though, once you learn how to, you know, like proper form and how to work out and all that stuff, you start realizing that some of them aren't doing really that great. <laughs> so that then you get more confident because <laughs> you're like, well, whatever, you can lift 100 pounds, but you're using like five different muscle groups to do it. You know, and I'm over here doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So that's, that's where that comes into play. Got to get rid of that intimidation factor. Hormonal effects, women especially, like our, our hormones are all over the place. If we don't do what we need to do to regulate that, we're never gonna be able to get our goals, right? Especially when it comes to weight loss and stuff like that. It's gonna be really difficult to reach those goals. So what I have people do, especially anybody um, 35 and older, women usually, I'll get them, I'll say, hey, go, go get your labs done. Have you ever gotten your labs done? Have you? Yeah. yeah. So, but a lot of people haven't. Mm -hmm. So I'll say, why don't you go get your labs done? Let's go see, let's see what's going on on the, like internally. Make sure your hormones are good and all that. And then we can really dig into, okay, how can we make this better? You know? So a lot of people don't realize just how, how much hormones play a factor. Um, and then of course, when you add in exercise, then that's gonna help regulate those hormones a lot more. So, and it doesn't have to be an hour and a half, two hours a day. You, know, you can incorporate a 20 or 30 minute walk. You know, that's, that's gonna get those hormones going like they're supposed to. You feel like you become more energized. So I don't know. Do you exercise in the morning? Um, it depends on the day. Yeah. Yeah. So like this morning, I went to six a.m. Pilates, but it okay. depends. Yeah. Do you feel more energized when you work out in the morning? Oh, uh, about the same. Really? Yeah. I, I usually me, do it at night. Like at night, I'll really? do like the regular gym, if you will. Okay. Yeah. But okay. in the morning, I like to ease into the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, it's, everybody's still different. Mm -hmm. and, and so I don't ever tell people they have to work out in the morning. Right. I just say, hey, that, work, that works for mm -hmm. me. Because <laughs> people always ask me what I'm doing. Well, I work out, you know, I exercise early in the morning. I personally, and I don't know if it's just because I'm feeling, I'm getting older now, but I, it definitely helps energize me. Because if I don't exercise in the morning, I kind of just feel like, well. I feel sluggish. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do. It's hard to get going. But if I just get that, even if it's like 15, 20, 25 minutes, whatever, Sometimes it's just walking the dog. But if I just get that in and then, you know, I take a shower and then I'm just like, I'm ready for the day. I'm good. <laughs> All right, so this is Vanessa. Um, she says, when I began working with Jody, she put so much effort into educating me on proper form and how to eat healthier to reach goals. She helped me achieve a dream that seemed unattainable in the beginning. She made sure I had everything I needed. So we worked together a while back and she's actually, she just got accepted to nursing school. So, mm -hmm. but she's still implementing the things that she learned. She's doing really good. Then there's consistency. You can't stop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I have one client and I actually have a testimony on here that I added earlier cause she just sent it to me. But she said a lot of times she would see progress and then she would, she would just stop and go back to her old ways. And then what happens? You just, you just go just back. back. <laughs> you just go back. You're going to go back to where you were. So you can't stop. It's a complete, continuous journey. Progress, not perfection. Don't try to be like the supermodel that you see on Instagram. All right? <laughs> it's not. Some of us have real lives. Some of them don't. <laughs> you know? So some of that stuff's Photoshop. You know? So don't, don't try to be like somebody you see. Just try to be a better version of yourself. It's all about progress. And if you can be a better version of yourself, then you gotta be happy with that. Forming better habits. Once you have implemented those habits into your life, you're gonna see that it's just gonna start flowing. Everything's just gonna start flowing. All right, so this is Kenya. Kenya and I just had a really good conversation yesterday, as a matter of fact. Um, she said, Jody, you've been, here, been there for me every step of the way. There are four years and a baby boy in between these pictures, but the key is I haven't quit. 
When I started working with Jody, I was clueless where to begin. I had to get over my mind, work on time management, know it was okay to take care of myself, learn how to track my foods, and learn how to exercise on a consistent basis. Jody made it easier for me, and she taught me so much. I love the way I feel now, and I'm crushing my goals one by one. So since that, Kenya and her husband and her family, she has two boys now, they just PCS, um, if, so if you're military affiliated, it just means they move from one place to another. <laughs> if you're not, you're like, what does that mean? So they were, um, they were in Japan with us, and then they just moved to Arizona. So in that, she gained a little bit of weight. They were eating out a lot, though. Mm -hmm. So we had to kind of get to that. So she said, you know what? We're going grocery shopping tomorrow, and I'm getting back on track. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen sometimes. Life's going to happen. But as long as you develop those habits, then you're going to be able to stay consistent. And she knows what she did, so all she's got to do is change that again, all right? Just like I did in that other picture. All right, and then this is Regina. So Regina and I had a good conversation a couple weeks ago too. Um, she said, I have tried, I had tried so many things before meeting Jody. She taught me that food didn't have to be my enemy and the diets were just temporary. She had tried every diet in the book, some that I hadn't even heard of. <laughs> well, it took me years to finally re realize she was right. I'm truly grateful that she educated me so that I could use everything I was taught and implement it into my lifestyle. The exercise always came easy for me, but I would get so frustrated trying to figure the nutrition out. What I really had to do was get my mind right to where I was open to receiving the tools provided. The journey never ends, but I'm glad to be on it. You gotta trust the process. You just have to. And, and I told her the same thing I told you guys at the beginning. I don't make anything up. But she had to believe it for herself, and now that she has, she's seeing the results she wanted to see. All right, so here's the one that I got this morning. This one had me in tears too. So. <laughs> Hi, I'm Carolyn. Um, I'm a 28 year old mother of two living in Okinawa. I reached out to Jody, um, not really knowing what to expect uh, after the birth of my second. I was double months postpartum and I was struggling with pretty much everything. Um, I have a, a toddler as well, so my life was chaotic and I felt like I was going under pretty fast. And I I struggled with depression and anxiety for a lot of my life and a lot of the habits I've developed over the past uh, 16 years or so um, have just been very negative. And it was hard for me with that amount of pressure and that amount of, of stress and anxiety from the kids. I, I just, I could not, I could not get a grip on myself. I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to start. And Jody came in and she just, she listened to what I, what I had to say and she put together a plan custom tailored for my needs and every month she hears me and she, she responds and gives me things to work out, work on that are me specific. And I can honestly say that after only two months, uh, I feel like I haven't felt in 16 years. I am, I am in control of my days, I am planning, I am meeting goals, I am making better decisions just without even having to think about it. And this is all because of the tools that Jody has given me to implement and the support that she has provided to me through her program. Uh, and it's honestly, it's, it's, you know, it's not step by step, this is exactly what you do, it's tools. She gives, she gives tools and then you are in control of using them. And it feels so good to be able to take ownership of the changes I've made in my life. This, that's something I haven't been able to say in a long time. I'm, I'm seeing results. I can't, I've tried so many times to, to lose weight or to, you know, build healthier habits as far as exercising goes or to even changes in my parenting have come around as a result of Jody's program. Um, truly, she has touched every aspect of my life just in two months. And it's, these are things that I'm going to keep with me forever. I'm, I'm sure of it because I've never felt better and I've never felt more in control. Um, I know my husband has definitely noticed the difference. He said to me the other day, gosh, you just look so healthy. Mm -hmm. And I, that made me smile. It made me just like that is exactly what I'm working for. And I'm just so pleased that other people are starting to see the changes that I'm feeling inside. And it's all thanks to Jody and her program really been incredible. I recommend it to absolutely anybody. Thank you so much, Jody. Thank you, Carolyn. <laughs> <laughs> she and I had a really good, really good conversation yesterday, and she, it was kind of, she got that epiphany, 
you know, where it was like, I get it. <laughs> like, and, and she was the one I said that she would reach a goal and then she would kind of go back. And so, you know, now she's, it's not that she's changing that, it's, you know, instantly, because it does take a while, but she's aware of it now. And once you become aware, that's when the change happens, because then you can make a decision. But if it's just a habit that you do every day or something that you've just always done and you just go back to that, you can't make a decision anymore. You're already done. You already made it. So, will you be my next success story? <laughs> <laughs> will you be my next success story? Yeah. <laughs> so, if you picture this, uh, you know, when you're healthier, you're happier, right? So, see. She's super happy. That's how I feel now. That's how, that one picture. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, your friends are happy. You you make I say you you make better relationships in your life because you end up around more positive people, right? Instead of the negative people that were trying to pull you back all the time. So then then you're happier. You have a community of people on the same journey as you. Your family's happier if you have a family. Yeah. And then you know, like that's me sometimes. I just sit there. I'm like, you know what? No. <laughs> I feel good, <laughs> you know, and, and you just have to be able to do that with yourself, like saying that, you know, I feel good, I'm, I'm there. So total health life proven system, I say it's 100% guaranteed because as long as you do the, the work, as long as you put in the effort, you're going to see the results. It's just going to happen. Who is this not for? <laughs> Those who make excuses, <laughs> right? Well, I want to get started on my health journey, but I got these bills I got to pay over here, and it's just not in my budget. I've been there. <laughs> but one thing I had to do is I started looking at the value of things over the price tag. You know, what's the value for some people, especially people that go to the doctor all the time? How much money are you saving by not having to go to the doctor and get those medications all the time when you become healthier? You know, so I think a lot of people forget to look at that part of it, and instead they're just looking at how much everything costs. So I don't want to work with those people. I don't want to work with people who are just like always negative, always, always, always. They're not going to believe anything you say. <laughs> and what I what I usually do with them is I just say, you know what, I'm here. I'm here when you're ready. And sometimes they come, sometimes they don't. But I'm here. <laughs> who is this for? This is for anyone who is on their journey and they just need that kind of kick in the butt <laughs> to go a little bit further. You know, it's 100% accountability. Um, and I don't leave anybody behind. I take everybody with me. You know, if I go, if I'm going up, you're going up with me. You know, and that's just how it works. All right, so my gift for showing up is I have a four month deluxe package and I'm offering that for half price. So, and we'll go over that. Anybody that has to. <coughs> Ironclad guarantee, take action now and you're guaranteed life-changing transformation. You are your best asset. I provide, well, I say we because I do have a team. We provide con confidentiality, safety, and we have got your back. So nothing you say to me or anyone else is gonna go anywhere. Um, I have one coach with me now, and I still have to train her up. So really, I'm doing all the coaching right now. Um, and nothing that people tell me, unless they give me, like everybody that was on here, they gave me permission, right? So I don't, I don't do anything without permission. And again, the four month deluxe is what I'm kind of getting people on because, like I said, it takes two, ten weeks. I have an eight month, and then I have a thirty day, but it takes ten weeks. So. You know, if I can get people in that one, <laughs> then I know that's going to be where the ultimate results come out of play, and then they can just continue it from there. All right, so I said go to the back table, but there's no back. Well, there's that, but I don't have everything back there. So <laughs> that's it. I know I went over on time, I think, but we started kind of late, so I think it was still an hour. That's it. So I'm going to get off Facebook Live. Thanks for watching, you guys. Contact me. <laughs>